Hey guys, how's it going? Different type of video, but routers are the heart and soul of any tech home and it many times gets taken for granted. This is the ASUS RT BE92U, or you can just call this the BE9700. Wi-Fi 7, it's been slowly trickling in. It started off really expensive. When it first came out, I believe you had to spend like $700 just for an entry level system. It could still go up to $1,500 to even $1,800. But I think 2025 is finally the year where they're able to get the price down and you're still able to get great speeds and it's incredibly easy to set up. So speaking of price, this BE9700 is sometimes on sale for $219 and it can go up to $300. And the way this started out for me is I've been using Eero for decades and I've always had issues with it. So then I tried the TP-Link Deco and I've had a lot of issues with that one. It could have just been my unit. I don't know. I don't want to say anything bad about those brands, but I just started doing some more research and I came across Asus and apparently they're very well regarded in this space. So I reached out to Asus to ask if they could send me some review samples and they agreed to. This video is not sponsored. They're not getting to see this video first. They're not telling me what to say. These are just review samples that were sent out to me. Thankfully, they sent me three different systems that I'll be doing different reviews on. But I wanted to start off with this because it is the lowest in terms of cost and it performs incredibly well. And for most people, this will be all that you need. So the way I did my testing on this, I used this as my only router for three weeks when I just got it. And then in anticipation for doing this review, I use it for another week. That's the only way I'd feel comfortable pushing out this review of this router, the BE9700. All right, first of all, what is Wi-Fi 7? Without nerding out too much, it's essentially just faster, more efficient, and much more stable than previous Wi-Fi standards. Mostly since I cover a lot of gaming content, the most important thing to me is the latency, which is much lower. And I know you might be thinking, can't you just use an ethernet cable? Yes, of course you can. And if that's available to you, always use that. But in my situation, my modem is on the other side of the house on the first floor while right now I'm on the second floor and I don't have access to using wired backhaul. This house is not outfitted with ethernet ports all around it. So Wi-Fi is my only solution. So that's why my router has to be very, very good and very, very reliable. But anyway, I could ramble all day long. Let's get right into the build and the design of this BE9700. Very simple design. It actually looks like a router that was made like a decade ago. So you're not going to win much design awards here, but they're keeping the cost down and that's what's the most important for this. But it does have four antennas and it can be rotated in any which way you need to. So just play around with different configurations until you find something that just works well for you. And at the back, you're getting a power switch, which I do find to be useful because usually when I'm resetting my router, I'm unplugging the cable and plugging it back in, which is much less convenient. So that's really nice to have. But more importantly is it has five Ethernet ports. Four of them are 2.5 gigabits per second, and one of them is actually 10 gigabits per second, which is not something I really see at this price point. And it's tri-band, which means it has three bands. One 2.4 gigahertz band, a five, and then also a six gigahertz band. So it covers all the bands used in Wi-Fi 7. And because of that, it also supports MLO, which once your device is supported, it can send data using all three frequency bands simultaneously. And a lot of products in 2025 support Wi-Fi 7 and MLO. And back to the build, this has a lot of ventilation. And that's because this has a 2 gigahertz quad-core processor. And it's always running to make sure everything is being routed correctly on this device. And I think that's where this shines the most compared to a lot of the other systems that I've checked out. I don't know if it's specifically because of the quad-core processor, but I've used Amazon's Eero for almost a decade. And I've had a multitude of issues with that system, especially with laptops and desktops that use certain MediaTek chips. Sometimes it just won't even connect or it'll disconnect randomly. It's just super unreliable. But I haven't had any issues with any of the ASUS systems that I've been checking out so far. So that's really, really, really nice to have. And I also have an old LG B6 OLED TV, which came out back in 2016. And ever since I got the Eero, the Wi-Fi on that TV just never worked again. I just figured it was an old TV and maybe the Wi-Fi card got fried. But the moment I switched out of Eero, I ended up switching to some other systems and the Wi-Fi just started working on that. And thankfully on the Asus routers, it's working again on that. So... There's a lot of aspects about a router that a lot of reviewers don't cover, or maybe just because they're testing it, they're not living with it the way I did 
with these systems. So I think that's really important when you're considering a router because it's supposed to work in the background. The only time you really ever notice a router is when something goes wrong. And setup, man, it was super simple. You just plug it in, connect your modem with the ethernet cable, and the app does everything for you. You just scan a QR code to connect your phone to the router. Then you just create an SSID, which is that name that you see from the dropdown whenever you're connecting to different Wi-Fi's. Create a password and then the firmware updates. And I was up and running in like 10 minutes. And I think what took the longest was just updating the firmware. And speaking of the app, it's very easy to use. Let's just take a quick look. It's configured a little bit differently. And that's because I am using the BQ16 Pro that Asus also sent me. And I'll be doing a separate review on that. But for the most part, it's very similar. So the app layout is incredibly easy to use. So this is what the home screen looks like. So one thing that you can do is add a node, which is just another wireless access point. And one thing I should point out is every single Asus router works as a mesh router. So you can start off with this BE9700 and then eventually get another Asus router and then either use wired backhaul or wireless backhaul, which essentially just creates a mesh network. So you can get even more coverage if your home is larger. This BE9700 supports 2400, 2500 square foot, which is essentially the size of my home. But anyway, there is a one-click optimization. It will disconnect my Wi-Fi. So I won't do that now, but it's just something you can do. And these are all my devices that are connected at any moment in time. Like I said, I have a baseline of 30 devices that are pretty much always connected. So it's good that I can see what they all are here. And at any point in time, I can click on them. I can either optimize it. I can set up to whether it's for gaming, streaming, or work from home, and it will optimize that. And I did not mean to tap that, but you could get a good idea for what that looks like. And you can assign this to a family too, which I don't, I didn't really set, set that up yet, but you can set, let me just go to that really quickly. So you can set up different profiles for different people based off of their age. So for preschoolers, all the way up to adults. And what that essentially does is you can start to limit their devices to where the internet will shut off after a certain time. Really good if you have kids and if you wanna control or monitor what they're doing. And, and there is AI protection that's built in, which is nice. A lot of stuff that Asus offers for free, actually just about everything they offer for free, while a lot of other companies hide behind a paywall. So that's really, really nice. And you can even set up a VPN here by setting up a VPN server. And what you can do as well too, is in the Wi-Fi settings, you can add different access points. So you can have an access point just for kids using only certain bands. And you can also have the internet shut off at a certain time. You could even run a VPN through a certain access point too. So when you connect specifically to that Wi-Fi, it automatically goes to the VPN. So there's so much stuff I, I can spend forever talking about this app. Maybe I'll get into a little bit more as I cover some of their other systems. Just leave me a message on what you want to see in future videos because I have two more Asus routers to review and I can't wait to review them. All right, I know all you guys care about is the speed test. So let's get right into that. It's a little bit more nuanced. So the test I did was a local test. I, I was using my Wi-Fi, which is AT&T's fiber one gigabit, and it's incredibly fast, but this router supports speeds much faster than that. But the fastest device I have only seems like it supports a two gigabit connection. So theoretically, you can be getting better speeds than this. But with that being said, let's just get right into it. So I, so I did a test just a few feet away from the router and I got 1,881 and a little bit lower on the upload, which is crazy. The fact that you can get these speeds at under $300 is insane. But here's the thing though, when I left the room and went into the family room, which is now being separated by walls, the speeds went down to 395 megabits per second. And 195 megabits per second on the upload. So that's a big drop. I would say that this router is more suited for open concept homes, condos, maybe apartments, etc. But But still though, 395 megabits per second is still more than fast enough. If you were streaming Netflix with 4K and Dolby Atmos, you need at least 25 megabits per second. So you're still more than covered. And also run a speed test on your internet using an ethernet cable if you can to determine what your max speeds are. So if that's the case, then this might be enough for you. But if you do want or need more speeds, then Asus' Zen Wi-Fi BQ16 Pro might be a better fit for you. And that's what I will probably review next. But anyway, I didn't want to just stop the testing there. So next I did a test in my kitchen and in my living room, which at this point is probably like 600 square feet away. 
And I mean, I still got more than acceptable speeds. And then I went outside and speeds did drop a bit, but still coming back to that Netflix 4K streaming, still more than acceptable, even outside. And then I took it upstairs to where this office is. And ironically, I got higher speeds, which is great. But this is the torture test. I took it into the bedroom and into that bathroom, which is at this point, the furthest away from where that access point is, this router. And I still got more than usable speeds. So... That's why I was able to use this for three weeks for this review purposes, and I didn't really ever notice it. The only time it kind of bugged me is when I'm uploading these YouTube videos because it's 4K and it takes up a lot of bandwidth. So what I would just take my laptop and just walk up to the router itself and just be near it and just, just while I'm doing my upload and then just go around my merry way. But when I'm playing online games, somebody's watching Netflix downstairs, somebody is watching Netflix in the room, I'm on my phone while I'm gaming, while I'm streaming, et cetera, and nothing I could do can shake this system to make it break down. So that's one thing I was really, really happy with. And that's not something I could say about every other wireless system that I've had. And again, at this price point, you just can't beat it. Really, really happy with this. And I can't wait to do a review on the mesh systems. Whatever you wanna see me cover in those videos, or if I missed anything in this video, please leave a comment. I try to answer as much as I can. And thank you guys so much. If this video was helpful, leave a like. And if you wanna see more, subscribe. Thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.